Hello and welcome to the STEMC Studio channel. In this video, we are going to extend our implementation of the exterior product or the wedge product as, as it's called, so that it covers the exterior product of all of the different grade elements of our multivector. That is, it covers the scalars, the vectors, and uh, the bivector uh, on each side, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, when, when those are um, wedged together. Right now, we, uh, if we look at the implementation, we can actually tell that the exterior product uh, is actually only generating the bivector component, uh, and it's only considering the cases when uh, we have vectors. That was because we've evolved our geometric number from what was originally just a vector, and we were only considering vectors. Uh, and then as we evolved it, we didn't, didn't fill in the, the details. So this video, for some of you, um, you will have already implemented this because I did actually leave it as an exercise in the previous geometric um, product video. But I'm also going to cover a little bit of theory that is going to enable us to uh, extend or rather implement geometric algebras uh, in higher dimensions, that is higher than um, the uh, current two basis vector dimensions that we, that we have today. Okay, let's get started. So let's uh, take a look a little bit uh, at the theory of how we're going to redefine the exterior product uh, in terms of the geom geometric product. And this is going to enable us to uh, extend this to higher dimensions. So recall that the, uh, the outer product, the exterior product of two vectors, can be written in terms of the um, geometric product of uh, those same two vectors by, by just doing this sort of anti-symmetrization trick here. And that's what we're basically going to sort of extrapolate going forward. We're going to say that the outer product of any number of vectors is just the fully anti-symmetric combination of the geometric product of those vectors with some appropriate normalization factor. So just as a wedge b can be built by saying okay let's write down a b from that and then let's flip them with a minus sign and we get minus b a then add the normalization factor because there are two terms so we divide it by two so we get a half factor we're going to do the same thing if you have three vectors so if we've got a wedge b wedge c we write down a b c and then what we do is we just start flipping term, flipping the factors within the term, like exchange B and A, and put a minus sign, we get minus B A C. And then we exchange the C and A, and it becomes a plus B C A. And then here it looks like we're exchanging the C and the B, and it becomes a minus, and so on. We just kind of like keep on going. Eventually it's going to terminate. We're not going to be able to generate anything new, and, and we're done. If you count up the number of terms, you see that the number of terms is six. So our normalization factor is basically one six. So we divide by six. Okay, so some observations from this. If we exchange any two vectors, then just by the way that we've constructed it, we're changing the sign of the expression. Okay. So furthermore, because of that previous observation, um, if we exchange any two vectors, then if any two vectors are the same, if they're equal, then the result has to be zero. Okay, so this is really useful because it's going to enable us to um, define uh, the you know geometric algebra, um, you know, for any number of, of vectors being multiplied together. All right, so let's see, uh, let's, let's look at our tabulation again, and uh, we'll just kind of like run through it again just to check it um, quickly um, and see, see how it relates to some of these ideas in here. So the first row here, which is what we get from wedging, you know, this scalar with these, is just purely that scalar multiplied by each of them. So not much there. Same thing for this column here. It's just RA multiplied by the thing which is on the left-hand side over here. Okay, so we'll just check instead these nine elements in here. And we say LA wedged with RXEI. Oops, sorry, 
going to be going below. LXE1 wedged with RXE1. We bring out the LX RX factor and then we multiply it by E1 wedge E1. E1 wedge E1, two vectors are the same, so the answer is zero. Look at this LX RY. Those are the two scalar factors. And then we've got the E1 wedge E2. So we're kind of done. Uh, in this case, again, bring out the scalar factors, but it's the it's the vector wedged with the bivector um, produce, produces zero again because E1 uh, wedged with, with these um, is, uh, is zero. Um, just It just a, kind of occurs to me here, something I didn't kind of like really call out, but I sort of assumed there is an associative law for the um for the wedge product that is if you um have a wedged with and then you put parentheses around the b and the c here that's the same as if you put parentheses around the a and the b and then did the c so uh there is an associative uh law kind of at play here and it just basically then says that in fact the parentheses don't matter at all all right so uh let's see where are we up to? <laughs> uh, we've done this one. Yeah, we've done this one. Okay, down to down to here. L Y R X. There's the L Y R X factor. And then we've got E2 wedge E1. Well, we can flip the order of the E1 and E2, but that brings in the minus sign. So that little minus sign, don't lose track of that there. We need to bring that in. What about this one? L Y R Y. That's a uh, scalar factor, but E2 wedge E2 is zero because we've got two common vectors. Uh, same thing here, we've got E2 wedged with something that contains the E2, so that's zero, and so it goes. Okay, so this is what we're, we've tabulated, uh, and now we want to actually go and implement it. So I'm actually going to uh, try to do this in a sort of test-driven development way. Um, I'm not sure it's going to work out very well, to be quite honest, I think. Uh, in this example, it may be, not be the easiest way to do it, but we'll try. Okay, so uh, there's our exterior product. Let's run our tests. Okay, and I'm going to hide the uh, hide the theory or the documentation because I, I'm I'm actually going to do the to to build the tests um, sort of independently. Um, I think. Let's see. Okay, so. Uh, we need to go to our specs and we need to uh, set up some tests. And I'm just going to copy the mole one just to make a start. And so what I'm going to do is E2 multiplied by exterior product of one with one. Uh, that should be one. And you can see it's broken already. Okay. And, you know, that's basically telling me that um, I need to, uh, let me see, you know, here's, here's why. Uh, since since uh, we worked, I actually renamed these parts of the, uh, of this method to be actual and uh, expected. Okay. Um, because saying left-hand side and right-hand side tended to make you think in terms of the operands of the geometric product. And here, what we're really doing is checking an actual value uh, against an expected value. So um, yeah, this, this part doesn't, it, it's kind of doesn't give you much because it's saying, you know, what, and, and it's the scalar part is zero and the expected part is one. Okay, so let's go fix that. We go to our, um, to our implementation. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow the pattern that we've used when we've generally done kind of any kind of multiplication type operator, which is we're just going to create temporary um, variables um, because that makes this thing so much easier to read. So we've got an LX here, our Y uh, minus LY. Rx. Okay, and what we're missing is we've done the one times one that didn't work. It should produce the scalar one. So we need to have an a equal to la times ra, right? Um, 
and we need to use it. <laughs> so that's why our test is not passing. And boom, okay, our test is passing now. Now, I think in this case, test-driven development is going to be very painful because as we go through this, um, you know, adjusting adjusting this, we're going to be hopping backwards and forwards, and it, that's just too way too tedious. It is too tedious for me right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the documentation. I'm going to just stop the uh, stop the test output. I'm going to basically implement the table and the code, but then to <coughs> excuse me, but then to actually test it, I'm just going to um, do the calculations uh, in my head uh, more or less. Uh, sort of kind of create a little bit of independence as we test. So, all right, let's imp implement the table. So uh, the A, we should have LA, RA, and then these are the scalar values. They're all zero. So we're actually done on the scalar value. Uh, let's implement the X. So we can see uh, we've got an X component here. Then go down diagonally E1. There are no more E1s. So it's just LA, RX plus LX times RA, okay? LA, RX from there, LX, RA from there, and then we need to use that right there. Okay, let's do the Y bit, const Y equals uh, LA, RY. It's the E2 bit coming down diagonally here. I can't see anything coming down here. I'm off the table, it'll come in here. L-A-L-Y, there's the uh, another E2. So we get plus, sorry, L-Y times R-A. Okay. And then and we need to use that, of course. And then finally, we've got the uh, uh, the bivector contribution. So we're going to read off this diagonal. So we're going to have L-A-R-B, L-A times R-B plus lxry lxry as before uh, note so that's what we expect minus lyrx that's what we had before that's good and then plus lbra so i need to add plus lb times ra and yeah all of the warnings have gone because we're using every piece just do a little formatting there so let's go back to our testing so uh, we'll run the tests. I'm going to hide the documentation um, because I'm just going to do these kind of like as we go. So, um, okay, one multiplied by E, or this will be one exterior product rather with E1 should be E1. And that's good. One exterior product with E2 should be E2. And one exterior product with I should be i so nothing's changed there okay e1 exterior product with one should be um e1 uh okay and it's just like uh it's just there was a refreshing issue there um e1 exterior product with one is e1 e1 exterior product okay this one is going to be zero so um, it, it has to be zero and there's going to be an exterior product. Okay. And incidentally, I have defined sort of in the meantime, a zero, you may not have that in your code, um, but I created a zero, um, so that, uh, anticipating what I would need here. All right. So we come down, let's see, we've got to here. Okay. E1 exterior product with E2 is still I. That's good. E1 exterior product. This one should be zero because of the common vectors. Okay. Good. E2 uh, exterior product with one is still E2. It's good. E2 exterior product E1. This is still minus I. Okay. E2 exterior with E2. This should be zero. So indeed it fails. It should be zero. Good. E2 exterior product with I, this should be zero too. So exterior, it's a fail because it should be zero. Okay, good. And 
i exterior product with one is still i i exterior product this should be zero oops and uh, i exterior product this is also zero and i exterior product with i is also zero which incidentally is a um, i exterior product with uh, i is actually um, four vectors um, being wedged um, together um, yeah uh, so um, you know that's kind of quite a complicated expression and uh, probably it deserves to be sort of worked worked through but uh, I'm, I you know the answer is, is zero because of the common vectors. All right, so we've actually covered it. Um, we've actually implemented the full exterior product um, for um, all elements of our algebra. I hope that was uh, useful to you. I think one thing to just be noted is, is really just to uh, understand uh, the uh, fact here that um, the way that we can, the way that we build up um, the exterior product of multiple vectors is by forming this anti-symmetric um, product. And that is true uh, however many vectors that you want to have. And it also has the implications that if any vectors are the same, then the uh, exterior product is zero. Okay, if you like this video, please hit the like button. It lets me know that uh, you know I should carry on creating these videos. And uh, and if you want to see uh, more videos in the series, hit the subscribe button. Um, and uh, uh, until next time, I think next time what we'll, we'll do is um, we will uh, we may be we we might do a little bit more more testing. But um, one of the things that's kind of like just uh, I think is is a bit overdue is us um, having a, a slightly better implementation of the printing here. Um, this is a little difficult to read. And uh, if, we, if we change that, then uh, it'll be, make it a little bit more easy for us to kind of like uh, relate the mathematics to the applications. And I've noticed just down here, we've got an A to the power of B. That's uh, not right. Oh, we're wrong there. Oh, we're actually using the... Um, <laughs> the carrot <coughs> within a math jacks expression which it interprets as a power so i change it to wedge and we're good to go so there you have it um until next time uh happy coding and uh see you then bye bye